Welcome back to AP Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we are continuing our discussion of moles and stoichiometry and talking about percent yield problems in this particular video. Now when we say percent yield, percent yield is determined by taking the actual yield and dividing it by the theoretical yield and then multiplying that by 100. Now when we say actual yield, that's the amount of product that we actually produce in a chemical reaction in the laboratory. It's determined experimentally. So that means we have to go into the lab and actually carry out the reaction and see how much we really or, or actually make. Now the theoretical yield, this is the amount of product that we calculate that should be produced in a reaction. And it's determined using a stoichiometry problem. All of the problems that you saw me work in the last couple of videos, we were calculating theoretical yields, okay? All of those were theoretical yields that we calculated. You know, on paper and pencil, you can calculate how much you should make. You know, that's theoretical. Pretty much always, or almost always, the actual yield is going to be a little bit less, and sometimes a lot less, than the theoretical yield. And that's because there are sometimes factors that keep us can, from producing as much as we can. Like for example, there might be side reactions. Uh, there was a, a problem that I showed you earlier where we had uh, potassium reacting with water. Okay, Now that is a reaction that's quite uh, spectacular, rather explosive. However, potassium doesn't just react with water, it also reacts with oxygen in the air. So sometimes there are competing side reactions that prevent us from having the full effect or the full 100% yield. There may be other reactions going on. Uh, and that happens a lot in chemistry. There are other uh, side reactions that we have to think about. So let's try uh, an example here. In an experiment, a chemist calculates that 16.37 grams of calcium carbonate should be produced. However, after the experiment is complete, only 14.08 grams are collected. So what's the percent yield in this process? Once again, it's, it's a fairly simple calculation. You know, percent yield is just actual divided by theoretical times 100. So the actual yield, it says, is the 14.08 grams. And we know that because it says that's how much are collected. Okay, that's how much we really collect, how much we really actually produce. The theoretical yield well, that's the 16.37 grams, because that's the calculation that should be produced. So that goes in the denominator. So now we just multiply that by 100, and on the calculator we get an answer of about 86.01%. So usually, percent yield can be a very simple calculation. Now, sometimes there's a little bit more involved. For example, Let's say that we have an experimental process that we've done many, many times, and we know that over the long term it tends to have about a 72.0% yield. But we want to make, we really want to make, 10 grams of the product. Well, that means that the chemist should strive to produce what theoretical yield during the process. So do you understand that the problem here? We know it's a 72% yield, we really want 10 grams, so we should be shooting for more than that, shouldn't we? Because we know that only 72% will actually be made. We're going to use the same equation here. Uh, this time we know what the percent yield is. It's the 72.0, so I can, I can plug that in right there to that part of the equation. We also know what the actual yield is going to be. It tells us we're going to be making 10.0 grams in reality. So that goes on top here. And we don't know what the theoretical yield is. That's what the question's asking. So that's going to be our unknown, our x. And of course, we have a times 100 in here. So this is just an algebra problem. At this point, I'm going to divide both sides by 100. And we're going to get uh, 0.72 equals 10 divided by x. And let's cross multiply to make this problem a little bit easier to solve. So we have 0.72x equals 10. And now I can divide both sides by 0.72. I get that x equals 13.9 grams. So I should be shooting for 13.9 grams so I can really make the 10 grams. 
Now, here's another possibility. Let's say we have some calcium hydroxide produced here. We, we're going to take some calcium, drop it in water, and make some calcium hydroxide along with hydrogen. And let's say a student drops a 5-gram chunk of solid calcium into some water. After filtering and drying the product, the student finds that 7.76 grams of calcium hydroxide has been recovered. What was the percent yield? Well, notice that we're given the actual yield, aren't we? We're told that the student actually gets from the laboratory 7.76 grams of calcium hydroxide. But does the problem tell us what the theoretical yield is of the calcium hydroxide? It doesn't, does it? It just tells us that we start with 5 grams of calcium down here at the beginning. So we're actually going to have to calculate the theoretical yield using a stoichiometry process. So I'm going to set this up here. I've got a balanced equation, of course, with that 2 there in front of water. And we're going to start with 5 grams of calcium. And let's figure out what the theoretical yield of calcium hydroxide is. So grams of calcium hydroxide at the end. And we're going to go through my three-step process that I told you in the last couple videos. So in the first conversion factor, I've got to have grams on the bottom, one mole on top. And for grams from the periodic table, that's about 40.08. So grams are out. In the second process, or the second uh, step rather, we're going to have the mole ratio. So calcium on the bottom and calcium hydroxide on the top. And this looks like it's a 1 to 1 ratio this time. Both of the coefficients are 1, so it's a 1 to 1. Calcium goes out top and bottom. We're in moles of calcium hydroxide. We want to be in grams of calcium hydroxide. So let's uh, convert to grams. Our last conversion factor, 1 mole goes on the bottom and grams goes on the top. And when you add up the individual atomic masses, you know, 1 calcium two oxygens and two hydrogens, we get about 74.10 grams in one mole of that. So we cancel moles now. And we can do the arithmetic 5.00 divided by 40.08 times 74.10. And we get that the theoretical yield is 9.24 grams. Okay, now the actual yield was 7.76. So now we can figure out the percent yield. We just take the, yeah, there's a theoretical yield. So we take the 7.76 divided by the 9.24, and of course multiply by 100. And when you key that into your calculator, it looks like the percent yield is 84.0%. And so at this point, you should be able to work several types of percent yield problems. Hope you have smashed the like button if you haven't done so already. Hope you learned something from the video at the very least and enjoyed it. Uh, if you hit the like button, then the word, the word will get out about my YouTube videos here about AP Chemistry and this complete online AP Chemistry course so that other folks can take advantage of it as well. Hope you subscribe as well so you can keep up and, and follow me here on YouTube. Join me again in our next lesson where we can learn some more chemistry together.